Okay. In the previous class, we discussed about the different uh, derivatives instruments, what originally we use for uh, investment in the market. So, today we will be discussing about that uh, how generally the pricing or the valuation of those derivatives take place and uh, how this pricing is done by the investor before going to take this decision whether he should invest in this particular instruments or not. So, before going to talk about the pricing of uh, these financial contracts so with respect to the derivatives, there are certain assumptions so always we take uh, before the pricing part. Uh, these uh, assumptions are basically the uh, we can take that the markets are perfect that means, there should not be any information gap between the different uh, uh, stakeholders of this particular market or the different participants in this particular market and there are no transaction cost involved in this. There is no bid ask spread that means, always bid price is equal to the ask price that means, uh, we can say the market is uh, uh, information point of view the market is totally efficient and there are no restrictions for short selling that means, the short selling is allowed. So, more or less uh, the market should operate in a particular environment uh, where, where the market is basically highly perfect and every investor has the same type of information or same level of the information by which by using this information they can go for the valuation of this particular derivative instrument easily. So, that is the basic philosophy or the basic assumptions of what generally always we take whenever we talk about the valuation of uh, the derivatives in the financial market. Uh, then which are the models we use? Basically, there are different models we use for valuation of this forward or the future price. Uh, generally, if you talk about uh, this concept or uh, this particular uh, different models, let us see, uh, let us start with uh, the pricing of uh, the forward or the future, then uh, we will go ahead with uh, these options. Uh, uh, how this is the future price determined? Uh, according to the carry pricing model, there is a model we call it carry pricing. The carry pricing model says that uh, the future price is equal to the spot price plus the carry cost minus the carry return. Uh, then the, the question will arise what exactly the carry cost is. Uh, the carry cost is nothing but it is holding costs including the interest charges on borrowings, insurance cost, storage cost, etcetera. That means, to carry the financial asset to keep this financial particular asset on which from which the particular pricing of the derivatives has been derived. Uh, whatever cost we are incurring that is basically defined as the carry cost. Then what is the carry return? The carry return is whatever income we are deriving from this particular asset. For example, you say that uh, if it is an equity then we get the dividends and as well as if you talk about uh, uh, the uh, we talk about uh, uh, the bonds then we always uh, think about the coupons. Uh, then uh, what before going to discuss, let us see what exactly the short selling is uh, before we have, that is the assumption what we have taken. Short selling is basically the implies uh, the selling the securities which are not owned by the seller and buying them back on a later date. So, that is why the short seller always expects that the price of the security should go down which basically against this uh, normal uh, pricing the philosophy of this particular investor. Uh, whenever we expect that the price should go up. So, the whenever we talk about the pricing part of this forward contracts, uh, let us see that uh, how generally there are different ways the pricing is done. Uh, one is your for securities providing no income and another way is for securities providing given amount of the income and for the securities providing a known yield. Yield means we talk about that what is the return you are going to get from this particular instruments what you are using uh, for the financial market for the investment. So, therefore, there are three ways uh, or three conditions on which we should derive this pricing of that particular forward contract at a particular time. So, one is for securities providing no income, for securities providing a given amount of the income and for securities where we know this what kind of field we are getting. So, before that we are using certain notations or using certain 
uh, abbreviations uh, for this uh, developing this model. So, let us see that uh, which are those notations always we use whenever we go for the pricing of the securities or the pricing of the financial contracts in terms of the derivatives. So, one is already we have used that uh, we have a notation called the spot price. So, that is noted as S0 uh, in the current period or another one is the future what we are deriving or are estimating the future or the forward price today, what you are anticipating and T is basically time until the delivery date and we have uh, R which is basically the risk free rate of interest or the risk free rate, risk free rate of interest at the time of maturity or for maturity T for maturity T what we have taken into account here. Then one by one let us see that how this particular pricing is done. Let if the spot price is S or we have taken it S0 and the future price is for a contract delivery in T years is F which is we have taken it F0, then how this future price is determined? It is basically your F0 is equal to S into 1 plus R to the power T. That means, what we have taken that the future price at least we should calculate on the basis of the minimum return what we can expect from the market at that particular time and that minimum return is nothing but that is the risk free rate of interest what we can derive in that particular time. Uh, so, here if you on example let your uh, S0 is basically 390 and T is equal to your year 1 and your R is equal to 5 percent that means 0 0.05. So, then obviously, your F will be your 390 into 1 plus 0 0.05, then obviously, it will be if it is more than the period will be more than 1, then you could have this particular notation here, then it will be 409.5. That means, we are expecting that if the securities provide no income, that means, the minimum income is whatever rate of interest we are getting in terms of the risk free rate. Uh, accordingly, we can decide that what should be the price of that particular future in a particular time period. Uh, but uh, this is the simple interest rate what we have taken into account. But for example, the interest rates are measured with continuous compounding, continuous compounding what basically happens in the banking sector or any other financial sector. Then what will happen that instead of using this S0 we have taken in the simple case, we have taken F0 uh, is equal to S0 into 1 plus R to the power T. But whenever we take this uh, compounding interest rate, then it should be F0 is equal to S0 into E to the power RT. What this equation basically reflects? This equation basically reflects that or it relates the forward price and the spot price for any investment asset that provides no income and has no storage cost that already we know. So, if your F0 or the future price today is greater than the spot price into e to the power RT, then investor may buy the asset by borrowing an amount equal to S0 for the period T at a risk free rate and take a short position in forward contract. So, at the time of maturity, the assets will be delivered for a price of F and the amount borrowed will be repaid by paying an amount equal to S0 into e to the power RT, then the deal would result in a net profit which will be F0 minus S0 e to the power RT. That means, this is your predicted value and if this is your actual value, then if you know that this actual value will be greater than the predicted value then what the investor should do? The investor should buy the asset, maybe you have to borrow the money and take the short position in the forward contract 
So, at the time of this, if your F0 is greater than this, then he will make the profit of the total profit he can earn that is your F0 minus S0 e to the power RT. That is the logic what this particular investor is trying to use. So, if F0 is greater less than this S0 into e to the power RT, then the investor would sort the assets, invest the proceeds for the time period T at an interest rate R uh, and long a forward contract when the contract matures the asset would be purchased for a price of F and the short position in the asset would be closed out. This would result in a profit of S0 e to the power RT minus F0. So, generally this, this is the logic what we use in the equity market, the same kind of logic is used here also. We are comparing between the actual price and the expected price and if you assume that the actual price will be less than expected price or the actual price will be more than the expected price, accordingly the investor takes the position in the market and from that he can earn some profit. So, in second case basically if your F0 is less than S0 e to the power RT, then what will happen? The total profit will be total profit will be S0 e to the power RT minus F0. So, when an investment asset provides a known income, basically we know that this is the asset uh, we use in the market in terms of the preference shares, then what happens? Uh, because preference share, if you already you know this, what do you mean by the preference shares? Preference share is basically provides the fixed amount of the income at a regular interval or, or a, in a specific time period. So, therefore, what you can say that preference share is more or less uh, the characteristics is also close to the debt kind of instruments than the equity instruments. That is why if uh, the particular investor who owns the preference share of a company, they do not have uh, any kind of uh, uh, what we can say the voting rights or the ownership on this particular company. So, if you know this known income, then how the pricing is done? Uh, the pricing is done in this way, here your F0 is equal to S0 minus i e to the power r t. What this i represents? The i basically represents the present value of the income, present value of the income. So, if the future instrument is derived from a particular uh, asset uh, on which or from which we know that how much return we are going to get or it is a fixed amount of the return in a regular interval we are expecting, then this uh, particular derivation uh, valuation can be done in this way. Then another condition or another situation is that when an investment asset provides a known yield, then what will happen in this case? In this case it will be same because it is the rate of interest what you are getting. So, that is why your F0 is basically S0 e to the power R minus Q T and what this R represents the risk free rate already you know, the Q represents in this case basically the average yield Q is equal to the average yield what you are getting, the average yield during the life of the contract, during the life of the contract expressed again with this continuous compounding that already we have taken into account. So, therefore, these, these are the three conditions uh, on which how generally the pricing of uh, the future or pricing of, pricing of the forward can be taken place. So, already we have uh, taken into account. So, in general if you talk about how the valuation of the forward contract is done, suppose that uh, K is the delivery price, K is the delivery price in a forward contract and F0 is forward price that will apply to the contract today. Then the value of a long forward contract, long forward contract in the sense we can talking about the buyer contract uh, F 
let you denote it as f, then how it is done? It is f is equal to your f 0, which is the future forward price that would apply to the contract today minus k, which is the delivery price in the forward contract into e to the power minus r t. So, like that if it is the value of a short forward contract, then it will be k minus f 0, it is just opposite k minus f 0 e to the power minus r t. This is the way the value of the forward contract done for this uh, long forward contract and the short forward contract. Uh, generally, if you take in the market, the forward and future prices are usually assumed to be the same. When interest rates are uncertain, they are in theory slightly different. That means, if interest rates are uncertain in the market, uh, then we can say there is some difference in the price of the future and forward, unless most of the time usually forward and future prices are usually assumed to be same. There is a strong positive correlation between interest rates and the asset prices. Uh, that implies the future price is slightly higher than the forward price and a strong negative correlation implies the reverse. If you find there is a positive correlation between interest rate and asset price, uh, then we can imply that the future price will be little bit higher than the forward price, what you can derive from this particular formula. And if there is a strong negative correlation you are observing, then which will imply the reverse situation in that particular time period. So, this is the way generally uh, we can differentiate between the forward prices and the future prices. Uh, then another is instrument always we use or always the derivatives instruments are based on this or uh, this is a price through which this price of other instrument have been derived like financial derivatives have been derived. Uh, one is that is the stock index. So, the stock index can be viewed as an investment asset which is paying a dividend yield because every stock basically pays the yield that is why we are expecting that thing. Then in this case what is the relationship the future price and spot price we can have? The relationship between future price and spot price basically your S0 the same we know that e to the power r minus q, q is basically the average yield into the power e to the power r minus q into t. And already you know that Q is the dividend yield on the portfolio represented by the index. Uh, the, so, Q is basically Q is basically the dividend yield, dividend yield on the portfolio. Because index is basically a portfolio, that is why the Q is the dividend yield on the portfolio. Because once it is a stock index, we are expecting that some kind of yield from this some kind of return from this, then the formula for this uh, dividend yield or the known yield will be used here for the valuation of this forward uh, the future contract. Then there is certain situation where the index arbitrary opportunity will be available in the market. So, how it is basically used, how generally the arbitrary opportunity will be possible in the market. So, here there are certain conditions through which the uh, investor or we can say the arbitrator uh, can uh, decide that whether the arbitrary opportunity can be prevailed in the market or he can take certain advantage out of uh, this particular opportunities or not. So, here in this case already we have seen that how the valuation of the future contracts uh, which is based on the some stock index. Uh, so, in this case, if you use this kind of uh, uh, strategy or this kind of formula on which we can conclude that whether is there any kind of index arbitrary opportunity is existing in the market or not. So, how it will be possible? So, that is why if you say that your F 0 will be greater than your S 0 e to the power minus e to the, e to the power r minus q into t. What does it mean? Already we know that this is your calculated value and this is the actual value what you are deriving and this is the value what you are expecting from this. Then if this value will be greater than this, then what will happen? Then 
an arbitrager buys the stocks underlying the index and sells the futures. Obviously, he will buy this stock because this value will be more in this case and sells this particular future in that particular time. So, that is why he can get the profit like your S0 e to the power r minus q into t minus F0. So, this much will be the profit he can earn in that particular time. But if it will just reverse, that means there is some arbitrary opportunity if there is a difference between the expected price and the actual price. But when F0 is less than the S0 e to the power r minus q into t, then what will happen? This arbitrary will buy the future, he will buy this and he will sell this. And in that case, what he will do? An arbitrary buys the future and sorts or the sells the stocks underlying the index. If he has the money, uh, uh, sorry, he, he owns the stock, he will sell the stock unless he is weak. Generally, he always sells the stocks underlying the index. So, the profit he can earn that is your F0 minus A0 e to the power r minus q into t. So, this is the profit basically he will earn if uh, this is your first condition, this is your second condition. So, this is the way the arbitrage opportunity can be used by the investor to earn the extraordinary profit. So, that is why basically the index arbitrage involves simultaneous trades and futures and many different stocks. So, you have to take the different position at a particular time, uh, both in the stock market, uh, particularly the spot market and as well as the future market. So, if you take the different position both in the spot market and the future market, then what will happen? The arbitrage opportunity can be prevailed by the investor to earn some extraordinary profit. Then we have some futures and forwards on currencies, uh, because there are current currencies also the analogous to a security providing the dividend yield and the continuous dividend yield is the foreign risk free rate of interest. Uh, so, it follows that if R f is the foreign risk free rate of interest, we can use the this same formula, where in the beginning we have said that F 0 is equal to S 0 e to the power R minus R f, R f into T. So, this is the valuation of the future, if the future is derived from the foreign currency. Then futures on the consumption assets. Uh, so, consumption assets means we can say that uh, it depends on the storage cost and as well as the there are certain variables which play the significant role that is your storage cost, that is your asset value etcetera, etcetera. Then what you can see here, then the value will be the future value should be F 0 should be S 0 e to the power R plus u into t. What this u represents? u is the storage cost storage cost per unit. If this is your storage, corpus, storage cost per unit, then in the same strategy you can apply when the, uh, the same way we can say that let your F 0 is greater than or equal to S 0 e to the power R plus u into t, then what we can say that uh, what kind of position the investor should take and if your F 0 is greater than or equal to S 0 e to the power R plus e into t. So, in certain cases whether the investor should invest in this particular asset or the investor should invest in this particular future, already we have seen that if there is a difference between these two, then there is an arbitrary opportunity which can be used by the investor and accordingly he should take the position in the same way, whatever way we have discussed just now. So, this is about your uh, future and option pricing, uh, sorry future future and for, forward or the future pricing. And uh, then we can move to the option pricing, which is also a very important concept or important uh, uh, instrument uh, we use always in the financial market. So, like your forward and future, before talking about the options, we use some notation 
uh, small c here we will be using which will be denoted as the European call option, capital C will be denoted as American call option, you know what is the difference between these two. It can be exercised at any time, but European option can be exercised only that particular date, maturity date. So, P is equal to small p is European put option and capital P is basically American put option, S0 is stock price today, ST is equal to stock price at option maturity, K is equal to your strike price, T is equal to the life of the option, D is equal to the present value of dividends during the option's life then your sigma volatility of the stock price and r is equal to risk rate for maturity t with a continuous compound. So, these are the notations we will be using for deriving this uh, pricing of the options. So, then uh, there are certain variables which basically affect the option prices, uh, the certain variables are like this, you have your uh, let this is your already we know that the small c basically talks about the European call option and this is your European put option, this is your American call option, this is your American put option. There are certain factors which affect this option pricing that is your stock price, strike price, then the maturity term to maturity, then your variation of the stock price, then your R is equal to your rate of interest, then uh, already we have seen that what this D represents, this is the uh, present value of the dividends during the options life. So, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors which always have or play the significant role for determination of uh, the option pricing in the real world situation. So, whenever we derive this option pricing either it is for European option or the American option, we always uh, think about we study this uh, 6 factors, how this uh, 6 factors are behaving in that particular time, accordingly we say that how this pricing would be. Uh, done for this particular option. So, the strike price if it is more, it will have a positive impact on the call option, but it will have a negative impact on the put option for both the cases. Like your, if this is your strike price, this is your current stock price, if current stock price is more, then the call option price will be more, but the put option price will be less. Strike price, if it will be more, then the option premium will be automatically less, that is why it will have a negative relationship but the put option case it will be positive, it is the same for American option. For term to maturity because it is only matured at the time of the maturity, so there is no such kind of relationship we want to, we want to establish here. But C and P uh, if it is American call option, American put option, the larger the term to maturity then the price of both call and put option will be also higher. The, if the stock market is more volatile, the price is more, more volatile then we are expecting the option premium for both call option and put option will be more and the risk free rate of interest will be more than the premium on call option will be also more, but the rate of interest for is more than option premium for the put option will be less. Then if the present value of the dividends if it will be higher then the call premium uh, call option premium will be less, but the put option premium will be higher it is same for both call uh, American option and the European option. So, this is the summary table what we are deriving from uh, for valuation of option prices and particularly uh, these are the factors which are responsible for uh, deciding how much uh, how much should be the value of the option at a particular time. So, uh, there are certain ways through which this option pricing is done. Uh, there are different methods, we will be using here two methods, so the methods of option pricing. Uh, so, the methods are basically one method is your binomial tree model and another method where what we use basically the black skull model. So, there are two methods popularly used for pricing of the options. So, here first we will talk about this uh, binomial tree, then the we go to the black coal model. So, what basically the binomial tree model talks about? So, the let you have the derivative which the term to maturity is uh, last for the time t as uh, dependent on the stock. So, if uh, this is your stock and uh, this is the current stock price, this is the future price, 
uh, then what will happen either these are the different probabilities always they talk about uh, either it can go up to this or it can the future price also to this or it can go down by d amount or f also can go to d amount. So, these are the probabilistic function we can draw from here and from this probabilistic function we can decide this how much should be the price of this particular option. So, how it is done? Uh, let consider a portfolio that is long the delta shares and short one derivative that means is buying delta share, delta amount of the shares and selling one derivatives in that case. Then what will happen that uh, uh, basically either it can go up to SU that means this is the change into delta minus your FPU and this is you will get SD delta minus F of D this much profit you can earn. So, the portfolio is riskless, uh, the portfolio will be riskless when you are changing in the upper side, SU means it is the increasing, D means it is declining, then change in the upper side multiplied by the delta amount of the shares minus F of U should be equal to this change in the lower side into delta minus the F of D or we can say the delta is basically your F of U minus F of D divided by your SU minus SD. If this condition is prevailed, then we can say the portfolio is riskless. The portfolio is riskless if you consider that your delta should be this change in the future price in the upper part minus change in the future price of the lower part divided by the SU minus SD and S represents the stock price only. In this case, what basically we have seen that value of the option at time t is basically nothing but either it is S u delta minus F u or it is value of the option today, value of the option at time t is S u delta minus F u because it has increased further, then the value of the portfolio today is if you want to, you want to go for discounting it using your valuation formula, then it will be S u delta minus F u to the power into e to the power minus r t. So, another one is another expression for the portfolio value today is generally S delta minus F. So, F is nothing but S delta minus S u delta minus F u then e to the power minus r t. So, the future premium, the future price is basically calculated, the option premium is calculated by changing this stock price minus this particular value of this particular future in that particular uh, direction on which the probabilistic function on which this particular value changes. So, if you put this delta uh, substitute in that equation, then what you will get your f into in that previous equation where your delta is equal to uh, what your f f u minus f of d divided by s u minus s d, then what we will find then p is equal to f of u plus 1 minus p into f of d to the power uh, e to the power minus r t, which basically shows that the probability of the p represents the probability uh, where the p is equal to basically e to the power r t minus d then u minus d e to the power r t minus d divided by u minus d. This is the way basically this pricing is taken place. So, how generally if you take a numerical example then it will be more clear and then how basically it takes place. Let your u is basically your 1.1 your d is equal to 0 0.9 that means d u and d that means the stock price let it was uh, basically in this way it was let 1 10 rupees it can go up to 11 or it can go up to 9. So, this is the way generally you can uh, derive this. So, then u is equal to your 1.1 d is equal to either it will 
increase by one unit or it will decrease by uh, one unit. So, let u is equal to 1.1, 1 .1, d is equal to 0 0.9, then r is equal to your 0 0.12, then t is equal to your 0 0.25, then f of u is equal to 1, then f of d is equal to 0. So, if it will increase by 100 percent, then it will not decrease. Uh, then p is equal to your e to the power r t, r means your 0 0.12 uh, into t, t basically is nothing but 0 0.25 minus 0 0.09 divided by 1 min, uh, 1.1 minus 0 0.9, this is your f of u minus f of d that will be 0 0.6523. The then your f is equal to basically e to the power 0 0.12 uh, into 0 point into 0 0.25 into into 0 0.6523 into 1 plus 0 0.100 minus this 0 0.3477 into 0 that will give you 0 0.633. So, when we are valuing an option in terms of the underlying stock, the expected return on the stock is irrelevant. Basically, we are deciding what should be this particular value in that particular time uh, or how this probabilistic function, how much, what is the percentage of uh, probability of increasing, what is the probability of decreasing of this particular stock price that basically will decide how much should be the particular price in that particular time period. So, that is why we call it the risk neutral evaluation. So, the variables p and 1 minus p can be interpreted as the risk neutral probabilities of up and down movements and the expected payoff from the option is probability of upping of this particular price and probability of downing. If the probability of up, a price will up, a probability of up probability of up is p then the probability of down is 1 minus p. So, that is why the expected payoff from this payoff is equal to payoff from the option from the option is basically p into f of u plus 1 minus p into f of d. So, the value of a derivative basically the value of a derivative is its expected payoff in a risk neutral world discounted at the risk free rate. So, let uh, the same thing you can take s and, s and f. So, the probability of p is of up is p, probability of down is 1 minus p. So, it can go to s u, f u, it can go to s d and f of t. So, therefore, what you can say that the expected price of the stock at period t is basically p into s 0 into u plus 1 minus p into s 0 into d. So, the expected price of stock e into s t is equal to s 0 e to the power r t. So, what we can assume here, here we, what we can see or what we can say that the stock price grows on average at the risk free rate, we are expecting the price will grow, the price will grow at a risk free rate. And in a risk neutral world, all individuals are indifferent to risk, which is a very uh, unrealistic situation. So, in the risk neutral world, all the people are not very much concerned about the risk they are totally indifferent about the risk appetite, indifference about the risk what they are going to face if they are going to invest in certain financial assets in a particular time period. So, that is what the investor always wants to see. So, if you go back to, uh, if you see the example in this case, uh, let uh, you have a stock price. Uh, your example, one of the example we can say, 
uh, what we can see in this case sorry what we can say in this case that your uh, s of f and the probability we are taking into account that is your p which is of it is 1 minus p then s u is equal to 22 f u is equal to 1 then s d is equal to 18 there is a probability that it will go up to 21 it can go down to 18 so the f of d is equal to 0 so the p is equal to price is a risk uh, since p is a risk neutral probability then we have 20 e to the power 0 0.12 into 0 0.25 this is the value already we have taken into account in the previous example then it will be 22 p plus 18 into 1 minus p so the p is equal to already 6523 then we can also use this formula p is equal to it has R t minus d divided by u minus d which will be e to the power 0 0.12 into 0 0.25 minus 0 0.9 divided by 1.1 0 0.9 0 0.6523. So, if you want to go for the valuation of these then the probability of op is 6523. So, this will be your 0 0.6523 and this will be your 0 0.3477. So, then the value of the option is then the value of option is basically e to the power 0 0.12 minus 0 0.12 into 0 0.25 into 0 0.6523 into 1 plus 0 0.3477 into 0 that will be 0 0.633. So, the value of the option in this case will be 0 0.633. So, basic objective is we want to derive the probability of up and the probability of down. So, if this two probability function we can get then the value of the option can be calculated using this rate of interest and uh, other uh, time period etcetera uh, to calculate. But there is another case here we have taken that the price can go up to this price can go up to this, but if there are two steps let the price was originally 20 it can go up to 22 it can go up to 18 go down to 18. So, again it can go up to 24.2 or it can again down to 16.2 or it can again down for both the cases it can go, go down to 19.8 or it can go up to 19.8. So, each time let the step is for 3 months. Each time we assume that each time the step is step is equal to 3 months. Then how we can calculate this probabilistic function in this case? So, uh, there are different nodes basically we can see from these and from there we have to find out uh, the valuing uh, let we have taken the valuing of a call option. So, the value at node B basically you go back to we have taken into account the probability the same probability then the value at node B this is your A this is your B this is C this is D this is E this is your f. So, the value at node b let that means you are talking about here, here the value at node b what will be the value then we know already that e to the power minus 0 0.12 into 0 0.25 into 0 0.6523 into Three point two, because here already it is given this three point two. It is zero point zero. This is also zero point zero. The f of u, f of d is given. F is given one point two eight two three is equal to two point zero two five seven zero point zero. Three plus zero point 
three four seven seven into zero to be two point zero two five seven. So value at node A. will be e to the power minus 0 0.12 into 0 0.25 into 0 0.6523 into 2.0257 previous upper one plus that means it will come down here that's why that's why 0 0.3477 into 0 1.2823 so this is the way for the different steps we can see that how the value will fluctuate how the stock price will fluctuate and accordingly uh, we can say that uh, uh, how the valuation of this particular options can take place. Then how basically we can choose this U and D, whenever we have used this U and D extensively, but how this way, uh, what is the way through which this U and D can be calculated. So, uh, one way of uh, matching the volatility is to say it is basically we know that how we can measure this u, u is nothing but e to the power the sigma into del root of the delta t and d is equal to basically 1 by u that is equal to e to the power minus sigma your delta t. And what is this sigma? Sigma is basically the volatility of the stock price volatility of the stock price delta t is basically the length of length of the time step and this approach is basically used by cox rose and rubinstein so to know that what should be this u and what should be what should be the u and what should be the G, d is basically we can use this approach on which this uh, e and d can be calculated so the probability of an up move and down move if you want to know uh, how it can be calculated the pro p is equal to the probability of up move and this is we already know this is a minus d divided by your u minus d a is already we can denote e to the power uh, r delta t for a non dividend paying stock non dividend paying stock and your uh, if you want to uh, dividend paying stocks then it will be a is equal to e to the power r minus q into delta t for a dividend paying stock index and if it is basically the currency then it is e to the power r minus r f it is the risk rate of the foreign currency uh, into delta t your for currency foreign currency and a is equal to 1 for a future contract. So, this is the way the probability of the up that what is the probability that the price can go up that can be decided. So, here uh, already once the up can be calculated the down can be also calculated. So, the another method which is very much popular uh, in the finance literature for valuation of the options. So, that is your black school model. So, the black school model is uh, has a lot of popularity uh, for the valuation of uh, the options which will be largely used by the investor and as well as the policy makers to do this for valuation of the options. So, how this particular options or the valuation of uh, valuation of the options is taking place. Here the option price and the stock price depend on the same underlying source of uncertainty. We can form a portfolio consisting of the stock and the option which eliminates the source of uncertainty that is the basically the concept what Black Skull was trying to say and the portfolio is instantaneously riskless and most instantaneously earn the risk credit. 
So, this is the situation on which uh, we can uh, go for the evaluation of the options at a particular time and this is that is what the Black Scroll was trying to say. But it is little bit complex in that way because Black Scroll has taken certain assumptions to derive this formula uh, and they are basically this is a log normal distribution he has followed C represents the call option, P represents the pool option, the S0 represents the stock price, K represents the strike price and N D1, D2 basically is the function what uh, the normality assumption he has taken. So, it S0 into N D1 minus K e to the power e to the power minus R T N D2 and K e to the power minus R T into N minus D2 minus S0 and minus D1 and he has derived that how this D1 and D2 is calculated. And accordingly, if you find out this and you can use this, how the blast flow option pricing model will be used. So, how this function is derived in this case? So, n x is basically the probability that a normally distributed variable with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 is less than x as s 0 becomes very large, c tends to s and k e to the power r t minus r t basically and p tends to 0. Uh, as s 0 becomes very small, c tends to also 0 and p tends to it is basically k e to the power minus r t minus s, p tends to the uh, it should be uh, basically pay, uh, uh, it should be k e to the power minus R t. And p tends to 0, this is basically nothing but it is the there is some typing error, this will be your s 0 and this is also here s 0 and this is also the k e to the power r t, this is also the k e to the power r t, this is not the this thing. So, what we can say here that uh, always the Blaskell model is has its own significance, uh, it is basically what we can say that uh, uh, so this is what the Blaskell was trying to say, but the basic problem with this uh, Blaskell model is that it does not talk about the simplicity and sometimes we face the problem because uh, of this uh, normality assumption what the blast call has taken, but still it has its own popularity to be used. Uh, so, that is why it, I have just given the introduction of that and it can be used to we can put these values and in this formula then find out the option pricing, but before that you can see that whether the particular distribution follows a normal distribution or not where the mean should be equal to 0 and the variance or the standard deviation should be equal to 1. That is what the Blaskell was trying to say. And this is about the option pricing and there are different strategy what the people use in the market for this, uh, which is beyond this particular course, what generally basically we always because we talk more about the other financial assets. Uh, but what we can say that derivative is also one of the basic instruments or one way can say major instrument which are, which are used by the investor regularly to maximize the return in the particular time period and uh, we use the different strategy to get that. So, this is about only the brief uh, review of uh, or the brief concepts which are really used in the market for uh, the use of the derivatives. And uh, lastly, we can say that after discussing this, it is also very much important to know that uh, how this whenever we make the portfolio and we start the investment, how my investment is performing and what kind of uh, performance measure I should use to know that whether my in investment is doing well or not and what kind of performance measure we should use. Uh, so, that we can uh, also see or we should see before uh, going into the market 
and or other is there any kind of revision is required or that is the enough whatever portfolio whatever we have, we have made. So, for that we should discuss about something related to some concept related to the portfolio performance evaluation that we will be discussing in the next class. Thank you.